Hello YouTube, this is uh, Mr. Surplus not here with another rifle re a review. This one is on my um, SKS M59. Um, this rifle, it's, uh, it shoots a 7.62 by 39, the same round as the uh, 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 AK-47. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the only um, SKS that looks really similar to the uh, AK-47, especially right here in the front where the uh, gas piston operates on the top handguard here without the bayonet, even though there were some Chinese um, AK-47s that do have a bayonet, um, a spike one anyways. But it looked, when I first saw this uh, SKS, I did notice that the front was very similar to an AK-47. Um, this rifle, I purchased it just like all my other surplus rifles and has, have you guys heard in the reviews that I make, I buy them from, um, when I can, locally here in Miami, Florida from Sanco Global. This one is another one of their uh, surplus rifles that I bought from them. Um, the rifle was in really, really good shape. The, um, the stock, I completely uh, refinished it and also did a lot of retouching on the bluing on the metal. Um, as you can see, um, the stock came out really nice. This one I did it with, um, with um, tongue oil. It's got about maybe like eight coats. Um, I re-blew the, the back of it, okay? The back right there, and then I did the stock. I sanded it really good. It didn't have a whole lot of dings and, 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 and gashes on it, so it was just a matter of sanding it really good. And um, the only thing I don't like about the tongue oil is that it takes a long time. You gotta uh, lay a coat on it and then wait like about maybe, uh, this says 24 hours, but I wait about maybe like four, six hours and do it. And, um, and uh, that's how I did this one. Okay, as you can see. It came out really nice. The bluing, another thing, the bluing with the retouching that I did on it. Um, the bluing was pretty good from the start, but anyways, I retouched it a little bit, especially the, the bayonet here, which I'm gonna take, pull it out in a little bit. I, it, it, it came out with that, like that stainless steel dull color, and I actually re-blued it to, because I like the contrast that it gives the rifle, like every, like the black with the red, cherry red, um, uh, wood stock, so I like all the metal, all the all the metal parts to be uh, black or blue. I did the same with the bolt. Mm -hmm. The bolt, you know, all SKS they come with the um, um, with the bolt, uh, like a stainless steel dull color or polished chromoly steel, and um, I re I blued it and just so it'll match the gun completely all black. Um, this Jugo M59 is a what they call like a carbon copy of the actual um, Russian SKS, and um, I really like it. I bought it because of that. I haven't been able to find another M59. If I do, most likely I will probably buy it because this is the only one that I have, and I wouldn't mind ending up with. Um, two of them. Um, that's the other side of the gun there. It's got a little bit of a grain pattern on top. Okay. It's in really good shape. I mean, all the bluing, there's nothing worn out on the bluing. It's, um, it's in really, really, really good shape. So, like I'm saying, if I find another M59, this is like my favorite out of all the SK uh, SKS, I uh, have a couple more which I'm going to make a couple of re reviews, but those are the um, Jugo um, M59 uh, slash uh, 66, and then I got another uh, slash 66 A1, I think they call them, which has got like the night side up here, um, and then back here also, but I'll be making reviews on those. One of those Jugos, I have it set up as a sniper. Uh, SKS with the bipod 
a uh, nice scope on top. I got the, uh, I drill and top the uh, scope mount. I drill and top the uh, shell deflector. You guys will probably like that really a lot when I make a review on that. So yeah, this is my S SKS Jugo M59. This one I also had the uh, luck, like I'm saying, when I go to Sanco Globo, they're like probably about 40 minutes from my house. Um, I can just make an appointment with the lady there. She tells me when to go, what date, what time, and I go in there in a room, and they have they'll have like a room with full of SKSs um, or whatever rifle, the Mouse and the Guns, the Mausers, the K31s, and you kind of just go through it. They give you like about a half hour to pick the one you hand pick the one you like. So I picked this one because I figured it was in nice shape. Oh, the barrel on this gun. It's completely, completely super shiny. One thing with the Jugo SKS is that their barrels are not chrome lined. Um, uh, so, so you gotta clean them really good. And, um, but besides that, they're a very, very good gun. Very dependable. The receiver on these guns, um, it's not like the AK-47s that now uh, most of uh, AK-47s have the, the uh, stamp receiver, stamp sheet metal receiver. Uh, this receiver on, on the SKS are completely milled, milled receiver, meaning that they got a piece of uh, steel and they milled it out to where they came out with the shape and the actual design for the re uh, receiver. And um, um, so they're very, very strong guns. The tolerance are really tight. On these, um, it ho it's got a, a a ten round fixed uh, magazine, meaning that you can pull it out. You can take it take it out when you disassemble the gun. But basically, that's that's how it works right there. Um, I really like it. You can put some detachables uh, mags on these, but the metal ones they tend to jam a lot unless you go with the Tapco uh, uh, magazines. Um, but basically, I actually had this gun taken apart for a while, and I had, you know, the, um, yeah, I'm sure you guys know, the uh, Tapco uh, 6 part, whatever they call it, collapsible, collapsible uh, tactical stock, and I had it in that one, I had a really nice Tapco banana clip, which I still have it, I mean, I can change the gun around, but when, when, I, when I really started looking at it and stuff, you know what, let me bring this thing back to original shape. Especially now is that the M59s, uh, Jugo, SKS, they're very, very, really rare out there. You can't really buy them no more unless you go to a gun show or go to a, a gun broker or something. But this, they tend to, to ask a lot of money for these. This one, I think I paid for this one, it was like, uh, it was like $160. I'm talking about maybe like five years ago. Um, and, and around that time, you can find them. They were out there, but not anymore. So, um, if you find one of these, like I'm saying, you're gonna find a lot on the SKS. You're gonna find a lot of the, uh, uh, like I'm saying, the uh, M59 slash 66, the one with the grenade launcher in the front. You're gonna find a lot of those around. Um, those are your more, the more typical ones. Uh, but the M59s, the Jew 159s, the one with, the, with the, uh, without the grenade launcher. Um, they're really, really hard to find. Um, and when you find one, buy it. I'm telling you, because they're, they're not going to be around that long. Buy it. If you can uh, refinish it, do it. Uh, I pull, When I did one of my videos, I don't remember which one it was, I was talking about how some people, they tend to rag out uh, surplus collectors on not refinishing their guns. There's two... two, two um, Two type of collectors, the one that, that they feel they don't want to uh, alter the gun or how it looks or how they get it all beat up full of things and scratches because um, they, they think that it loses value by doing that. Um, and there's those that really like to get the guns and put them back in mint condition uh, or better than when they came out of the factory. Now with the technology we have, the... the, the um, the things to try to refurbish these guns, um, the um, it's just they come out way better. So I'm in that side where I mean I believe on refurbishing the gun 
making it look really pretty, really nice. I mean, most of these guns that I have, I'm not planning on selling them anyways. But, so why, why am I gonna keep them all looking like junk in, in my gun uh, uh, safe? So I just like to get them, getting them uh, refurbished. Um, the bolt, it cycles really good. Um, all of you guys know that know about SKS, when you cycle the bolt back on an empty magazine, there's a little uh, thing here that holds the bolt back. So you have to kind of like bring it down and go forward. It's got, this one has a really nice trigger. On this one and on my Jugo Sniper, I actually, there's a company called Wolf. Uh, you can find them in the internet that you can get the springs, the trigger spring, and it lines up the, the trigger and it gives you, there you go, it gives you like a two-stage trigger. I, I changed the trigger spring on this one and on my Jugo Sniper, the one with the gray launch, launch on my M59 slash 66 one, which I'll be making a review on that. Um, this one has got the bayonet. Um, it also has the cleaning rod. You got to be careful some of these SKS that they're selling out there. They come out, they're, they're selling them without the cleaning rod. And I've seen some of them where the bayonet, it's been removed. I know that in California, even I think the whole gun might be illegal. I don't know the laws over there, but in California, if they do allow you to have an SKS, I think you got to remove the bayonet. I don't know. Um, and, and this is the bayonet right here. You pull it forward. Go over right that like that, and that's how it looks. Right, as you can see there, see it better there. So you pull it forward to take it out. See how I re blew the the bayonet, the whole bayonet. I re blew it. Okay, you bring it back down, and that's it. There we go. So, very nice. This thing shoots great, man. Um, I've actually uh, hunted a couple of um, hogs here in Miami. Um, I have this property over by uh, um, Lake Placid in Florida, where I have a double wide trailer out there on, on two acres of land, and there's a lot of hogs. I've actually hunted like a few hogs, a couple hogs with this. Um, the way I do it is I mount a uh, a uh, mini mag light on this side and then uh, the, I actually use my, I don't use a regular laser, I just get my bore sighter laser, red laser to bore sight my guns at the range and I mount it on this side with um, electrical tie wraps and I go out there at night and that's how me and my buddies do it out there and um, but it's very accurate, really really accurate, the receiver is real strong, I'm saying it's, it's a milled receiver, um, really nice gun the blue one is it's immaculate in this gun. There's no um, edges that are worn out or anything. Everything is really solid, really nice and, and dark and blue. Okay, the bolt. I like the whole thing like that. Like looks real black like that. I hope you guys like it. If you have one, you can do it. You can get your bolt, disassemble it, and, and blue it, and um, and it'll look just like this. The magazine. It's all nice and dark. The front, barrel, the receiver, uh, the crown, everything, the whole, the bayonet, the whole gun. So I hope you guys like it. Um, this is my uh, review on my um, Jugo M59. It's a very good gun. I mean, we can get into the technical side of it as far as um, you know the years and and a bunch of other stuff. Um, Maybe later on I'll make one on the disassembly of it, how to disassemble the, the, the rifle, put it back together. Um, but I hope you guys like it. It's my um, my Jugo M59. If you, have, if you see any, any of these out there in the gun show, buy them. I know they might be expensive, they might be up to 300 some dollars now. But um, as time goes by, it's just going to get more expensive. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Mr. Um, Surplus Nut here nuts about sur surplus guns and I'll catch you guys later on another review. Take it easy.